Cooper. Brought to you by the Coleman Dental Group. <laughs> Take a shot in the kitchen. They're all over there enjoying it. I don't know how many jo part-time jobs Abby thinks she's going to be able to handle around here, but you start better, you start getting along with Zeke. <laughs> How's the food in here, boys? Yeah, yeah good. Everybody over there appreciate uh, Zeke coming Eat in well. every Thursday. Don't forget not steak night mm -hmm. up at Pizza Inn, Highway 53. You think it's just pizza? It ain't. It's Let's not. do a little bit of news this morning. City opens first fa fa fast field CNG station. There's our buddy Steve Carter, gas powered. Opened it up. I had a press conference yesterday that I seem to have misplaced what time it was going to be. <laughs> As interesting, our customers see natural gas as a heating source in homes, but they are now just beginning to see how the fuel works in the driveway. A clean fuel source for vehicles. Zach, I want you to get plenty to eat this morning since you're laying out of work. Uh, Athens <laughs> Gas, they sell this for $1.65 per gallon. Right. I wonder if I could get that Hummer converted. No. Decatur Daily also got a picture there. Don't forget, Marmac Real Estate, Mark Moody will be with us tomorrow. If you want to list a house in Athens, anywhere in North oh, Alabama, wow. plus horse farms, y'all need to give Mark a call. He will distribute that out to one of his 40 agents or more down that way. Okay. Affordability Act to come in focus. This is Obamacare. The number one question, question about President Barack Obama's health care law is whether consumers will be able to afford it. Here's the answer. No. The biggest study yet says that if 21-year-old, you have to have insurance or you can be fined. 270 a month. For a 60-year-old really? man, $615 a month for insurance. Wow. And it says here, the bottom line is mixed. Many consumers will like their new option, particularly if they've never had it before. Mm. But nearly all Americans will be required to have coverage or face fines. So they're going to make you have insurance. Maybe the fine is less than the insurance. I don't know. Auto sales party over. Hot sales in August. Automakers, especially like people down at uh, Jimmy Smith and all of them, across the nation doubled their sales. Automakers sold new cars and trucks so fast in August that they blew past even the most optimistic forecast. The month's annualized sales pace was 16 million. A year ago, the pace was 14 million. The raw number is a million and a half new vehicles sold in August. That is fabulous. And the reason is that because of low financing. And a lot of people, the average vehicle on the road today is 11 years old. Oh Automakers, incentives are down and transaction prices are up. Right now, they sold, in, in August, Ford sold, like 80 Pruitt Ford, sold 70,000 F-Series pickups. That's Unbelievable. All right, we're going to talk about the Tide for a minute, not the Crimson Tide, the wash detergent Tide. Procter & Gamble will introduce a lower priced version of Tide next year, a liquid detergent called Tide Simple Clean and Fresh. What do you use? Tide. Okay, well it must be kind of expensive. And here's an article this morning in USA Today, more Americans are warming up to weed. I'm talking about so marijuana, right. pot. Wow. As the nation takes a softer <laughs> stance on marijuana, more Americans are t using a drug. The report here says 12 and above. 12? That's what it says, 12. It says here, the 12 and above, Goodness. it was up. 12 and older nationwide, 70,000 people surveyed, said they are smoking pot. Nearly 24 million Americans, about 9.5% of the population, use the illegal drug uh, of some sort. 22 million Americans will need treatment for substance use. Only 2 million, 1 in 10, receive it. Goodness. So, Marijuana eventually will be legalized everywhere, Twelve probably. Year olds. Twelve year old. Coming up on the show tomorrow, we're gonna have entertainment, Frank. Yeah, Roger Whitman. Roger the Roger Whitman will be, will be performing tomorrow here on the show, and they are pretty well known. Plus, we're gonna be talking about something else. Uh, Mark Moody will be joining us. Stan McDonald. If you've got a house that's underwater, they can get you out can without the, uh, foreclosure. foreclosure. Without bankruptcy, you need to call for Stan. They are local right there in Madison. If you know somebody underwater, 325-1143. They can help. Give them a call. Now, you know, we'll get back to that Percy Sledge interview at a different time, probably tomorrow or next week. But right now, let's go to Danny Johnson, the roadrunner. I don't know where he takes us today. Beep, beep. <laughs> but here's Danny. Y'all, hang on.
Okay, the Roadrunner today is down here with uh, George Ezel. Uh, he's a knife maker, and he's going to carry us through some of the steps of uh, making a knife. Uh, what type of knife are we going to make, George? We're going to make what's called a uh, sax. A sax knife? Mm -hmm. How long is the blade probably going to be? Uh, we're going to be shooting for around an 8 inch blade. 8 inch blade, pretty thin blade. Um, actually, a sax is pretty thick. Pretty thick. Usually uh, about a quarter inch thick on the back, along the spine. Sharp on one side? Well, I'm going to get out of your way here and see what you can do. Yeah, the first thing I've done is I marked my tang transition using a fullering tool. And I've just now started forming the point, working it down to a proper point. So we're going to let her still get good and hot, and then we'll try it out. <clears throat> I'm using a high carbon steel today. And with high carbon steel, it has a pretty narrow temperature range you can work it in. You don't want to let it get too hot or too cool. If I draw the steel more narrow, it thickens up along the back. And I try to take care of that while I'm forging it down, I'm also forging it back thin. What I'm doing here is as I forge the edge onto this piece of steel, it's going to want to curl towards the spine. If I were to leave it straight, we'd end up with a banana shape. So what I'm doing is I'm compensating for that now before I even begin to put the edge on it. Another characteristic of the English sax was that the widest part of the blade is right there at the hump. So I'm narrowing this on down. Now before I forge the bevels onto it. I'm also going to try to work a little more curve into that part. Now, as you can see, it's already going a little cattywampus. So I'm going to fix that right now. Getting the edge thinned down. As we do that, the blade will want to curve this way. I'm basically just truing the blade up, getting any warps out of it. Sometimes this takes actually longer than forging the blade itself. As I know there's only one with an intact handle in existence. But the blades were very elaborately pattern welded. They were often inlaid with precious metals. They did not skimp on these knives. They were probably quite expensive. So I tend to think that they were probably status symbols to some extent. But they were also quite functional as a weapon or a tool. George, you uh, pretty much got it shaped up like you wanted, hadn't you? I believe so. I'm not seeing any problems with it. So what reminds us <coughs> of uh, you got to do now to finish it up. You got to grind it down and... Yeah, I'm going to grind all the scale off of it and get it nice and flat on both sides. And um, I'll use a very, probably a round file to cut in on each side of my tang and get my tang shaped exactly where I want it. And after that, it'll just be heat treating it and polishing it and putting a handle on it. Put handle. Doing it. I appreciate you taking the time with me and all right, showing man. me so much stuff. And, You're welcome. Uh, uh, that's, that's really amazing, and I'm anxious to see that when you're finished with it, so you have to bring it back down here. Okay, I will. Roadrunner out.